Hi guys, Squirrel here, and today I'm going to take a look at Fishing Planet. Now, what is Fishing Planet? Well, it's a game about fishing, funnily enough, and it's a fishing simulator in a way. It's primarily based at the moment in North America. I, it doesn't go further afield. Uh, I don't know if there are any plans to take it further afield, but currently the places you can fish are in and around North America, uh, all the way up to here, up into New York, and then down into Florida. These things unlock as you progress. You can see top left, I'm level 6, basically, so I'm not particularly high level, but level 6 is at a point where you can start to fish for some aggressive things like pike and that kind of thing. So it kind of gets fun. This is your starting zone, Missouri, and you need to progress out of here uh, in order to then unlock New York, which unlocks at about level 5, I think. Uh, you've then got level 11, North Carolina, level 16, Florida, 20 over here. Oh, sorry, level 8 would unlock first, uh, Colorado, 14 and 18. So you can see, I can see all the way up to level 20 at the moment. I think that's as far as it goes, level 20. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I'm fairly new to this game, and fishing is something that I've done, but I don't profess to be an expert at it. Fishing is requires a reasonable amount of knowledge that you have to learn in order to catch the fish you want to catch. You can't just turn up with any old equipment you have to turn up with the right equipment the right baits fish in the right place at the right time so you need to learn something about the fish that you're trying to catch and you know what are they looking for what time of day where do they go in the water and then you'll be successful so i'm going to show you today how to i'm going to take you through the whole thing um i'll show you an overview we'll put together a couple of um profiles if you like um that you can switch between when you're on site uh, you have to travel to the places. It costs you money to travel to the places. The idea being that you catch fish and you get points for the fish and you get XP for the fish. So you get these this currency here, the money. You get that when you catch fish. So the more successful you are, the more money you'll get and the more XP you'll get and so on. However, there is a cost in traveling. So you need to bear that in mind. It's more effective to travel to a particular place for us for more than one day it's more uh, cost effective as you can see here if i want to travel uh let's say to missouri it's going to cost me 20 pounds 20 notes 20 dollars whatever it is and then each day i want to be there is going to cost me five so it's actually better for me if i stay there for a few days and try to make it a successful trip which makes sense uh, the other thing to bear in mind is when you want to visit outside of your home state say like uh, new york you need to buy a fishing license. You can buy them here, so that's going to cost you additional money as well. You buy a license to fish. If you don't, uh, chances are you get caught and fined. So bear that in mind. Anyway, let's we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let, let's start simple. Uh, basically, here's our. Uh, this is a pretty click on the home thing here. This is your backpack. So your backpack is what you're going to take with you on the trip. You can have in your home. You can have you know an inventory full of stuff. You can have lots and lots of things here, lots of lots of reels, lots of rods, lots of tackle, basically. And then what you do is you assemble them into your backpack, uh, create some profiles, and then go fishing. Now, your storage space, which is shown down here, uh, is limited by your equipment. So if you, exa for example, take a tackle box and one of these little things with pockets on them, I don't know what they're called, then you'll increase your carrying capacity. So that's some equipment you can get from the shop. Now... I'm going to basically set up two profiles. I'm going to set up one to catch bass, right? We're going to go catching bass. And then I'm going to set up another profile to go and catch pike. Now, I'm going to have to catch them in two separate places. So I'm going to go to the starting zone here to catch bass. Now, if you kind of hover over the fish down here, you can see it shows you what they are. So I'm going to catch this one here, bass, from Missouri. And then when we've done that, I'll, I'll switch to the other setup. We'll fly up to New York. Uh, which is like the second zone that you get unlocked. And uh, we're going to go and catch some of uh, these pike, these long, thin things. They're like torpedoes. We're going to go and catch some pike, okay? So, switching back to the inventory. Basically, what happens here is I'm I'm choosing my equipment in this profile. If I, if I go through these different profiles, um, I, can, I can take different equipment. Because with some fish, you can catch them, for example, with a bobber. Uh, which is, or a float, which is one of these things. Uh, and with other fish, though, you can catch them with what's called a spoon, which is basically one of these things. It kind of it looks like another fish, and you drag it through the water, and the predator fish are attracted to it, and they'll try and bite it. When they do, obviously, they get hooked. 
Whereas with this kind of setup, with a with a, uh, a hook and a bobber, what's going to happen is it's going to sit in the water, float on top, dangle the hook, and uh, the worm's going to wriggle around, or the piece of bread is going to sit there, and then the fish is going to come by and go, oh, look, there's some grub. Go and bite it and get hooked that way. So different fish behave in different ways. Depends really whether they're kind of, they, they like to eat, you know, bread or cheese or pet food or whether they're more of a predator fish where they eat other fish in which case you need to pretend to be a little fish so let's start off with this one well this is going to be profile one this is going to be our bass profile what i've got here is a telescopic rod now the telescopic rod is is just a very long fixed rod uh, i've stuck a basic reel on it the reel is obviously the thing that carries the line now we do need some line for this and we're going to go with um, this one here which is the uh, the mono 0.12 millimeter this is rated here at a test test rating of 0.9 kilograms so as long as our fish is under roughly a kilogram we won't snap the line so we drag that onto there it's quite a, this is a beginner kit that i'm going to show you here we're going to go to the starter area this stuff is some advanced stuff that I've got. It's it's more carrying capacity and it allows me to store my fish live um, in the net. But you don't need these to start off with. Just start off with the basic stuff. So I'm going to go with some mono 0.12. The next thing I need is a uh, hook. Now the hooks come in different sizes and that's what the number rating is. The smaller the number, the larger the fish, I think, is how it works. Sorry, the smaller the number, the larger the hook is how it works, I believe. I hope I'm not wrong on that. But we're going to go with hook number four. We're going to drag that onto the hook slot. Then we're going to need a, a float. Now there is these things here, or bobbers, floats, whatever. Uh, I'm going to use this one, which is a, a premium one I have. Again, you don't need it. I'm just going to stick it on the... doesn't really make that much difference, to be honest, the float uh, in this particular instance. There are some things that later will help you catch better fish, mostly around the bait and that kind of thing, but we'll not worry about that for now. The final thing that we need is, you know, the actual bait itself, like what the fish is going to try and bite on. Now, if you go back to your shop, this is this is something that you can do. Go back to the shop by clicking on the basket at the top, go to baits and then go to common baits. If you click on bread, for example, it says target fish is catfish, carp, bluegill, all that kind of thing. Cheese, trout, there you go, pet food, you get the idea. If you go to uh, fresh bait, sorry, not fresh bait, insect worm bait, and click on red worm, uh, you can see that red worm, red worms are known under various common names, such as branding worms, one of the traditional baits that have been used for hundreds of years. Yeah, you see on, uh, on red worm, it says bass. So the bass is a predator fish. So red worms are a good bait for this. So we're going to take some red worm. I've already got some in my uh, inventory down here. So I'm going to drag the red worm on there. And that profile is now ready to go. We, we can catch bass with that. As long as we go to the right place, the right time of day, and all that kind of thing, we should be able to catch some bass with it. Now, I'm going to set up profile two, but we'll have to go to New York with profile two. Now, with profile two, we've got a casting rod. And a casting rod is designed, obviously, to cast so that you will, you know, you pull the rod back and you throw it forward and it will cast the rod, cast the bob out quite far. Now, with a catching pike which is what this profile is going to be going with we need to use a spoon a spoon is something you can get from here if you go under um, terminal tackle sorry lures and spoons there here are the spoons and <clears throat> if you notice there are some information here level three so level four level five and so on if you're not the right level then you can't go and use it anyway but it's designed to be this this is the one i'm going to use today sorry this one it's a, uh, a level six spoon you can see it's got the icon to show it's in my inventory this is a premium spoon okay there's nothing wrong with these spoons these will give you an increased chance of catching a trophy fish now a trophy fish is worth more xp so again if you spend a bit of money then you can potentially accelerate faster more xp exactly the same of world of tanks world of warships that kind of model i'm going to use a premium casting spoon I'm going to try and catch a trophy fish uh, if i can that'd be good for the video but you can equally use any of these which you just buy with money like that is a perfectly good one uh, these unlock at slightly an earlier level as well if you notice this is a 14 gram spoon which unlocks at level five if you were to get one with money then the 14 gram spoons normally unlock at level eight you see that 
So I can't buy that yet because I'm not level 8. I can buy this because I am level 5 and it's premium. So once again, a little bit of money unlocks it slightly earlier. So we're going to drag in a Casting Smooth 14. We'll put that on there. Uh, we need some line. Now, our, our pike can be a little bit heavier. So what we need for that is we need to scroll down, click on the line, the line button at the top here. And we're going to use a braided line. Now, a braided line is what it is. It's braided. It's twisted, which makes it stronger. We're going to go with a 15 mil, which rates it at 2.7 kilograms. So we'll drag that onto here. And that's all we need. There is no bait with a spoon. Uh, the spoon is literally the bait. Uh, there's no bobber or float because it actually drag it sinks into the water and then you reel it in slowly and it will move along through the water and act like a fish. That's the whole point. In terms of the, uh, the th this thing here, don't worry about that for a spoon. Uh, but with this thing, you've got to set it at the right depth. And the right depth for this particular kind of fish is about 30 centimeters. Uh, so it's going to float. Basically what that is, is the distance between the float that's on the top of the water and the hook. That's the, the distance there. If you set that too long, obviously the bait will just sit on the floor, on the ground. So you might need to cast into a different position. Uh, you'll see that because if that happens, then your your float will sit horizontal on the water, which means you know the bait just hit the floor. Uh, so you need to recast or you need to adjust that length. The length is important because some fish live higher up in the water and some fish live you know lower down in the water and depending on the kind of fish you're going for you need to set that length appropriately so that's that let's have a quick look in the shop and the common baits have already showed you then you've got i'm just going to show you the shop here just to get a feel for the kind of things that you can get um hooks and jig heads there are absolutely tons of these things uh spoons you've already seen they are you know fake fish if you like then you've got these hooks. You need plenty of these, but they're very, very cheap, like $2 for 10. Um, you will lose a line and a hook. If you get tangled in the weeds, for example, and you have to cut your line, then you will lose that bit of equipment. Uh, so stay clear of the weeds, and you shouldn't really lose any equipment, but it does it does occasionally happen. There are the bobbers, or, or the floats, whatever you want to call them. They're the things that bob on top of the water. Uh, you've got your landing nets, which are these things here. Um, these again let you <clears throat> they either, either let you hook the fish which is out of the water so that they, it kills them or you put them in a, a landing net now the primary difference is whether you're going to take the fish home or not if you can put them in a landing net then it keeps the fish in the water they stay alive uh, you might then take it home when it's superbly fresh um, or you might want to release them at the end of the day that's what the landing net allows you to do with with this hook here um, this will basically you hook them on and the fish just sit out of the water and they die it's it's that simple the uh, outfits as you can see you can i've got the uh, the denim on rather not catching denim and i upgraded i think to a comfort camper uh for some money i could go for a, for a travel pro which would give me uh, 10 tackles three line whereas that gives me seven tackles and two lines so again you know you work your way through this stuff until you get to the rather you know the pro angler premium money you know the, the best stuff is obviously going to be premium money because they want you to pay some money to support the game otherwise it's entirely free so that's fair enough there's the line tons of lines fluorescent lines braided lines mono lines um you know the, the you might if you're an angler already you'll probably know all of this if you're not like me then you have you know you read through the description and it starts to make some sense uh some of the war some of these lines are you know, they refract the water so the fish just cannot see the line because some fish um, are very sensitive to the line, some aren't. So someone will literally see it and just run a mile or rather swim a mile, uh, whereas some aren't so bothered. Spin reels and casting reels, loads and loads and loads of those. Ma main difference is, you know, how much line they can take, uh, the ratio, the speed they can actually recover the line, um, how much drag. The drag is when the fish sort of tries to take what a fish will do is it, when it hooks, it will fight and try and drag the line back out again, and that resists the drag. Lots and lots of options in here. We're not even going to look at this right now. And then you've got the rods, spinning rods, telescopic rods, match rods, and casting rods. That's for another day. Uh, I'm going to go fishing now so we can get on with some fun stuff, and hopefully, you know, we're going to catch some fish. So what you do is you click on where you want to go. We're going to go to Mudwater, Missouri. 
and you can see it's going to be fairly sunny all day long. I'm just going to go for one day and hopefully we'll catch some fish and uh, you'll see how it all works. Right, so here we are. Uh, we are now at Mudwater, Missouri. The time of day is currently 5 a.m. Now, when you work your way, you can accelerate time by pressing the T key, but bear in mind, you know, you've only got one day here, so you will burn through that day. Now, it says the best time fishing in the spooky weather is from dusk to dawn. So, th because this is the starting area, it's not too restrictive on the best time of day to fish, but you can kind of see when the fish... This is like an activity chart and it varies from place to place. Uh, you can see that it sort of picks up here around 10 a.m. and it just keeps on getting better. Uh, day two, day three, day four, day five, it's the starter area. It's keeping it nice and simple, just trying to get you to catch some fish. So, you know, what I would probably do at this point is accelerate forward to about 10 a.m. Uh, 10 a.m. is a pretty good time to start catching bass. Uh, so let's go fishing. We need to choose our spot. We've got this spot down here and we've got this spot here. I'm going to go here because this has some reeds and bass, like predator fish, what they do is they tend to hang out around the weeds. The reason for that is they use the weeds as camo, which is they're quite clever. They use the weeds as camo and then the little fish swim past and they just jump out of the weeds and nab them. Very nasty. And here we are. Uh, let's see if I can get rid of that. There you go. You press the tilde key to get rid of that. Otherwise, we'll keep getting interrupted. Now, as you can see, it's misty. It's 5 a.m. It's very quiet. Like, like, this is why you would go fishing. Like, if you can be bothered to get out of bed, this is why you would go fishing, because it's just so amazingly peaceful right now. There's not a lot of activity. The fish, um, the fish are mostly inactive. You can see these little bubbles here. That's a sign of, you know, fish bubbles. So there are possibly some fish in and around here. But they would be the kind of fish we're not going to go for today. The bass would live over there. This is not a good time of day. So I'm going to fast forward. Press the T key. We'll fast forward to 10 a.m. You'll see a, bit, a little bit sunnier. The mist should hopefully have lifted a bit. There you go. It's a lot brighter. Let's explain some basic concepts before we actually try and catch some fish. Uh, bottom right there is if I move the mouse wheel, you'll see that little thing moving. That is my recovery speed. So... That's the speed that the line is going to come in as I reel through. Uh, the more you make that, the higher the number, then the faster the line will reel in. When you're reeling in, of course, you're putting more strain on the line. You're trying to drag the fish through the water quicker. And if you exceed the line capacity, then you'll snap the line. It's that simple. Uh, pressing plus and minus will change the outer ring. That is the drag uh, speed. So when the fish, some fish are quite strong. Uh, particularly the bigger ones, and when they try to pull on the line, the drag speed is how much it tries to resist that pulling. So if you have a very low drag, then the fish will just run away, it will swim away and take the line with it. You don't want that. So if you put the drag really high, you know, like this, it will resist the fish from pulling. But again, if you exceed the line capacity, it will snap the line. And that meter on the right will go up as the fish is dragging. If you have that too high, then uh, the fish will snap the line. If you have it too low, it'll just pull the line away till it reaches its maximum length, and then it'll snap. And you can see the maximum length on this is 66 meters, shown zero of 66. Now, if I just hold down my left mouse button there like that, just click it, and it drops the line in, drops the bobber in. You can see the bobber is now in. If I hold down the left mouse button, I'll start to reel it in, and it counts down four meters, three meters, and in. Very, very simple. If I... Spin the wheel and maximize the speed. You should see that when I reel it in, it comes in quite a bit quicker. Yeah. Now, the other thing you can do is press the F11 key. Now, if you press the F11 key, you switch into a sort of a casting mode. And what happens then is you can cast a lot further. So let me just reel that in and I'll show you. Come on, in you come. Hold down the right mouse button when the line's up and it will show your position indicator. This is where you're going to aim. And you can see um, the kind of on the right there, you can see the, the gray bar. That is the position. When you, when you let go of this and then click the left mouse button, the bar will rise and you need to snap it in there like that. If you do, it will land where you wanted it basically. And we'll just start to reel that in. But that's how you get further and further away, yeah? So we're going to reel that in and we're going to try and catch something. 
that's the basic concept you can see top right it's now 10 18 a.m so we need to sort of move over here and uh let's see if we can get some fishing done now i'm going to aim just over the that's the maximum distance i've got this is not a casting rod this is a telescopic rod so its range is limited to about here but hopefully that should be enough we've got it on 30 centimeters because this you know the water's quite shallow and then it will get deeper uh so quite shallow i think round about here should do it i'm going to set my speed and we're going to just cast it in there like that and you can see and then you wait you wait uh, i'm going to take up some of the slack here right there you go so you see when i started to, now i've got a bite already you can see can you see that activity and we've got a line there you go so we start to reel in now the first thing we need to look at him swimming around look at he's just going crazy he's going absolutely nuts right we need to tie him tire him out so what do we there's the drag we just let him play around for a little bit reel in a bit more line try and keep the line tension going and bait was eaten or lost because we caught a young largemouth bass so congratulations we just caught a bass fish because we fished at the right time of the day with the right equipment in the right place and it's a starting area so it makes it a little bit easier 0.4 kilograms that's not a bad little fish um 6 xp brackets 2 now what that means is uh, that's the premium xp so i get a little bit more for having premium uh, there are no restrictions on this fish, so we can release him or keep him. I'm going to keep him. He's worth. He's a keeper. He's worth having. So, obviously, the bait was consumed. Uh, the red worm was consumed. And uh, that's how you burn through consumables, if you like. But as long as we don't get the line snarled, we won't lose the hook or the line. Sorry, we won't lose the hook or the bobber. Uh, we'll just basically lose the uh, the bait. So, let's try that again. That, was, that caught me out a little bit. I didn't expect to bite so quickly. What I was trying to explain to you is the, the line tension meter. Uh, if you sort of reel it in a little bit like that, you'll see I'm moving the bobber. Um, but once the line is like this, if you sit still, if the bobber starts to move, then it's not you doing it. It's another fish doing it. It puts the bait back onto the hook automatically, so you don't need to worry about that. Uh, once you've caught a fish, it just reloads it. So you then just got to sit and wait. I might be a little bit far out from the weeds there. Uh, if I don't get a bite shortly, I'm going to reel this in and go a little bit nearer. But again, you've got to be careful because if you drag it too near to the weeds, then chances are uh, you will lose the line. I'm going to pull it in. I don't like where that is anymore. We're going to go a little bit closer to the, uh, the weeds where we were last time, possibly. Maybe like about here. Running the gauntlet near the weeds. There we go. So we cast in. I'm going to bring my speed down a touch, reel in that slack just until it moves, and then I'm going to sit still and wait. And hopefully we'll get another bite. It's the right time of day, so we should get another bite. Pike are a little bit more tricky to catch, as you'll see uh, when we jump over to the pike area. But this is how you get going. You know, catching fish um, early on is a good thing. It'll encourage you to carry on. So I think the starter area does make it a little bit easier. But red worm is a very good bait. The other bait is um, pet food, surprisingly. Um, I never thought fish would go for pet food, but apparently they do. Bread is a traditional bait. Um, but pet... Oh, here we go, here we go. You see that? Movement. Wait, 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 wait. Don't go too early. If you go too early, you'll lose it. Get ready to snap it. You can see he's having a good old nibble on that red worm. There it goes. There it goes, and he's off, so let's let him tire himself. Look at the line tension meter there. You want to keep the slack. There, he was a strong one. So he's dragging the line, reel it back in. Try and keep the rod going the opposite way to him, but then reeling the slack when he changes direction. That's the, the general thing. So I'm just letting him, you know, swim around. It's, he's going to get tired. And eventually bit more slack and there you go a young largemouth bass another 0.4 kilogram so that's another keeper again same xp and that's it that's, that's basically how you catch bass fish so i'm going to leave this area now obviously that's going to cost me money normally what you do now is fish all day and get lots of fish and lots of xp 
and that will help you level up. But I'm going to jump out of here and we're going to go and fly to New York and try and catch some pike. All right, well, that was Missouri, which was fun. We caught some uh, bass there. I'm going to click on here now. We're going to go to Emerald Lake in New York. Uh, travel is a lot more expensive. It's 140, so that's a lot of money. You're going to have to fish all day here um, if you want to catch fish. And let's have a look at the licenses. A basic New York license is 30. An advanced one is 40. Uh, the basic New York must be released. This stuff must be taken. This stuff. Uh, if you buy an advanced one, must release, no restrictions, must be taken, no restrictions, prohibited, no restrictions. So what that means is, if you buy the basic one, let's just look at this. If you buy the basic license, then if you catch any of these fish here, then you must release them. Trophy Northern Pike, you must release it. You can't keep it, basically. And if you catch any of these fish, then you have to keep them. In other words, New York doesn't want these fish, so if you catch them, you take them out of circulation. If you get these things, you've got to put them back. So we're going to go for an advanced one, uh, which is a level six, and we're level six now, which means we have no restrictions. It costs us a bit more, but we have some restrictions on it. You've purchased an advanced New York license. Again, stay for more than one day, and it's more beneficial. So let's jump into New York for one day and see if we can catch some fish. Right, here we are. Now, um, you can see now the, the, the basically varying weather patterns. Uh, today... Annoyingly, tomorrow is rainy, um, which is annoying because you can see what happens when it rains. The, the, flat, the activity level flatlines because when it rains, it puts more oxygen into the water and the fish get more and more active and they start to feed more. And of course, because they're feeding more, the predator fish go catching and they feed more. So everybody feeds more when it rains. So when it rains, the activity level is quite flat and you can catch fish all day long. So had I bought a two-day license... I should have looked at the weather patterns and bought a two-day license and come here for the second day. Whereas now, because it's sunny, you know, the fish are going to basically feed at this time of day. That's going to be the peak activity level. So that's annoying. Uh, it means I'm going to have to fast forward time to about, what, 11, 12 a.m., somewhere around that mark, and then go uh, hunting for fish. But that's fine. You live and learn. I think I'm in the wrong spot. I need to jump out from... Oh, no, I'm in the spot I want to be. Yeah, this is where I want to be. There's two fishing spots. Let me get rid of that. There's two fishing spots. Uh, I'm going to try and catch fish just over here. Now, this is setup is no use. I'm going to go to setup two, which is the one I've got with the spoon on the end, and I've got my casting rod here. Uh, and I'm going to be casting over the over here somewhere. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and cast about here, and then I'm going to drag the line. Remember, this is a spoon, so I'm going to pretend to be a fish and drag it past here. They should be in and around this area. This looks like a good hangout for, for pike. What they'll do is they'll try and nab the other fish from, from eating. There's also potentially another spot through there. A risky move is to go here and drag through that thing. Um, if you can pull it off, you'll catch fish, but there's a good risk that you'll tangle your line uh, on something on the way. Although spoons, spoons tend to be um, quite good, even when they get snarled up. The, the premium spoon in particular seems to release itself quite successively. Uh, so even though you get it snagged, often you jig it around, you'll you'll get it released. But I'm going to fast forward time. Can't open while the rod is cast. Thank you very much. Let's press the T key. We're going to go forward to around about 11. You can go forward, you can't go backward. So we'll go 11. We want it ideally around 12. Now look at that. The last time I came here, it was throwing it down with rain. But now it's a beautiful fishing day. Look at this. This is why you would want to fish, people. Okay, now, a pike is quite aggressive, assuming we can catch one. But we may not just catch pike. We might catch pickerel or perch. They're the other things that are going to potentially go for a spoon. Uh, now then, let's cast off. I'm going to go uh, over... Mm, let me think about this. Let me, let me stand over there a little bit. I'm going to go around about here to start off with and see if we can get any, any joy... Right, so we're going to cast off, and you'll see what happens is the spoon falls into the water. And you see it there, sunk to the bottom. So now what you do is you start to reel in. And the idea is you want to keep it roughly like that, like not on the bottom of the of, of the bed, but certainly not at the top. So you've got to keep stop-start, and I'm going to increase the speed. This is called stop-and-go technique. And what it does is it allows the predator to see the fish, but obviously when you stop, you, you give it a chance to actually get hold of it. Um... 
which is what you know a normal fish possibly wouldn't do that no okay so that that didn't work let's try again now once you're out the starting area you know things get a little bit more tricky and you won't always catch fish that's the first thing i need to say here so oh here we go here we go oh that's a lot of tension good grief Line was broken. Terminal tackle is lost. Please send it to the rod or assemble a new one. So my drag factor was... I had a big fish then. My drag was too high. And I basically broke my line. And I lost the spoon, which is very annoying because that was a, a premium spoon. <laughs> so that lost one of my premium spoons. I've got four left, so I'm going to put a, pop another one on there. But there was a lesson learned then, right? I had my I had the drag factor on on that level there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower that drag. Uh, that basically snapped the line. That was way too much, but I was in the right place with the right timing. So let's let's try that again. That was going to be a big boy as well, I reckon. If you get bites like that, even if you lose your line, uh, obviously it's annoying. But take heart in the fact that you're doing something right because hey, you just snagged a fish and possibly a big one. So that's good. It means that what you're doing is right. But you can see the drag factor. It went red. It sat on red. I should have turned the drag down very quickly. I was nowhere near quick enough turning that drag down. And uh, the net result was the line snapped. But you can see, oh, hopefully you can see, that there's, you know, skill is involved in this. It's not just, you know, chuck the hook in. You've got to be good. You've got to know what you're doing to catch fish, just like in real life. So it is a simulator. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Right, now this is going to be a strong one. So I'm going to just let him have a little play. You can see him bolting around here. Bringing that slack. Bringing that slack again. I don't think this one's as big as the last guy. I'm just going to let him have a little pull. If, if he starts to... Um, if that meter goes too high, just push the line back towards him and then, you know... It won't put as much tension on the line. I think we're getting close to landing in him. I think he's tired. Can we take you now, boy? You ready? Yeah, there you go. Trophy Grass Pickerel. Now, look at the XP. Because this guy's a trophy, we get 33 XP, which is... If you remember the last what fish I bought, I got like 6 XP. Massive amounts of XP. 0 0.6 kilograms. So that's a lovely boost to the XP bar here. So I'm going to keep that. Pickerel fish, lovely. But the technique was good, and we caught a rather nice fish. I'm going to fast forward time to sort of late evening. See if we can get some better luck. Wow, that guy, <laughs> that guy just jumped on the hook right at the end here. Trophy Yellow Perch, 72 XP. Look at that. 0 0.9 kilos. That is an awesome catch. I was dragging the hook along here and he got it. He just got it just about here. He must have been swimming around this bit. It's exactly what I was trying to get from over that side, but I just got him here. We'll keep that. Blimey. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Let's turn the speed down. We need to tire this guy out. I knew there was going to be something in and around those weeds. So let's let him take the line, reel him in a bit. Keep that tension meter down. <laughs> go on, you have your little play. You have your little play, sir. Keep your eye on the distance, seven meters. You don't want him to go too far ahead. You want him to tire out, but not run away with your line. Four meters, let him go, let him go. 
Three meters. He's coming now. He's, he's he's had enough, I think. Here he comes. Come on. Let's have a look at you. A trophy yellow perch again. 0 0.8 kilograms. 72 XP. It's just a massive boost to the XP bar. And you're a beauty, aren't you? Nice. We'll keep that. So I got him uh, by casting off just over there. And obviously I'm risking it coming through here, but this is where they are. They're in and around this bit here. As long as these lily pads stop it from being a perfect spot where you can just come straight through there. Unfortunately, they love the camo, which snags up your line, so you've got to deal with it, I'm afraid. Snagged again. <laughs> I'm probably going to... Oh, here we go. I was going to say I'm probably going to lose my spoon in a minute, but... Wow, he's, he's close. Blimey. Hello? You want out, don't you? You fed up of it in there. <laughs> Catch me, squirrel. A trophy redfin pickerel. Not as much XP. 27.7... 0.6 kilograms. We'll keep it, though. Yeah, it's a time of day thing. It's like, as we're getting to the evening, these guys are getting more and more active. They seem to sort of come out at 10 in the morning and then again about sort of 6, 7 at night. That seems to be the active feeding time. I had no joy through the day when all the other fish were allegedly active. Snagged. We're lucky these spoons unsnag easily. Here we go. Okay, you have the line, you have the line. Give it back to him. Then reel him in a little bit. You're trying to reduce the line length without snapping the line itself. There we go. Normally, once you get to the bigger fish, you're going to need a landing net in real life because you just can't, you know, you can't lift them out of the water. You'll snap the line. So you put a landing net out and get him in the landing net and then lift him out with that. 69 XP for a trophy yellow perch, 0.8 kilogram. Quite relaxing though, isn't it? Like some some games are relaxing. This is one of them. Like Euro Truck's quite relaxing most of the time. You know, it's not. You, you've got your shooters, your action games, your horror games, your thinking games, strategy games, and then you've got this. People probably think, you know, why? Why would you want to go fishing in a computer? I think there are a few reasons for it. Like, bear in mind that most fishing in winter can't really be done. Here we go. Have we got something? Oh, he got snagged. But we had a fish then. You know, most, in winter you can't really go fishing. Blimey, do you see how far he just jumped? He jumps out the water. He must have jumped six meters towards me. Okay, you have that. In winter you can't really fish. So... People who do love fishing can actually do this in winter, which is good. The other thing is, it actually, because it's based on fact, it actually teaches you things. You know, you can see what kind of equipment you need. You can read it in a book, you can read it online, but... Arguably, there's no substitute for actually trying it in a simulator. Like anything, really, that's the whole point of simulators. Oh, you don't want to come. Unlike your mate. Blimey. Trophy Grass Pickerel, 0.627. Hmm, we'll keep him. It's not caught that elusive pike, though. All right. Let's have one last go over there, and then we'll call it a day. All right, let's get down here. I really want to catch a pike for you guys. But you can't... You can't control these things, you know? Let it settle. Oh, straight away we've got a bite. Beautiful. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Reduce the line tension. Did you see that? That guy just put the line tension on max straight away. We're going to have to play with this one. See that he's running away the line. I need to put more drag on. He is taking that. 42 meters. Blimey. We are at the limit. I'm going to have to let him... Oh, don't you dare. Reduce the drag. This guy does not want to come. Let's try reeling him in. No, he's taking the line. 
He's not having it. Come back, you. Come back this way. This guy is strong. Don't you dare snap my line, bro. 66 meters. We're on the limit here. He's going right across the pond. We have to te we have to really tire him out. All right, come on, you. It's time to come home now. You've had your fun. I can't get him down. I can't get him to, to come back. He's still hauling the ass. <laughs> okay, I think he's finally tiring luck. We're able to bring him in. No, don't you dare. Don't you dare. Oh my god. 70 meters. See, some of these, um, some of the bigger fish, they're really strong. And you've got, you've got to spend time landing them. Sixty-four. Sixty. We're getting there. But you can see how hard this is. You know, this is not easy to get this guy. He's tired out now. So we can start reeling him in a bit more. So what I'm doing is I'm hauling him when I can. I'm putting the drag up, hauling like that. I think we might be able to get away more drag now. Yeah, look. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Easy, Tiger. He's still got some energy left in him. So I'm increasing the drag. Increasing the drag. Then hauling him. And then reeling the line in. It's a combination effect. But I need the drag to be high so that I can pull him like that and then reel it the line length in. But whatever this guy is, he's not small. But he's now tired, so hopefully we can land him. Careful. Careful. He still doesn't want to come yet. He's close. He is close. Come on, pal. Come on. You know you want to. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, come back. He's still playing. This dude is still playing. He does not want to come. Taking it back to 11 meters. I can't. I cannot stop him. He's still strong. My God. So if I put the drag meter up, he's just running away again. Like the line tension is just massive. I've just got to let him go. There's, there's nothing I can do. I can't get him. If I put the line tension up, he just goes. <sighs> 23? He was like, I'm not being landed. Nope. Swim all day. He had a resurgence of energy from somewhere. I really want to land him, but he's not playing ball. Right, come on. You've had your fun. It's time to come home. Come on. Come on. In you come. In you come. you got to be tired now, pal. Come on. My God, he's strong. Holy, what are you? A Northern Pike, 1.3 kilograms, 70 points. Woo! I'm so glad I caught that for you guys. Look at the size of that guy. 1.3.
and the struggle was real. That's a great way to end the video. Wow, 1.3 Northern Pike, blimey. We're keeping that. Right, we're up to 5.8 kilograms out of 6 on our fishing net top left, so we can't even hold any more even if we wanted to. You can see it going misty. That I think we could catch more pike if we sat here and tried, though. 7 o'clock. Um, but I'm going to end it there for you guys because... Uh, let's have a look at what we did. So what you do is you press escape. You go, I want to leave now. Go back home. Make sure you want to leave. Yep, and then it gives you a summary. 7 fish, uh, 6 trophies, 24 snags. One line break. What did we get? 87 money. So we didn't make it pay. You can see I need to get a lot more than that. Uh, 87. It cost 140 guild to go there and 40 for a license. So we lost money. I'd have to catch a lot more than that. But it was worth it just for that fish. Just for that northern pike. Well, there you go. That is Fishing Planet. I'm almost level 7. Please give me a like if you enjoyed that. Let me uh, have your comments about Fishing Planet and what you think. Are you going to play it? Do you want me to play it? Would you like to see? Would you like to teach you how to do things or just show you what I catch? Leave me your comments and let me know. Until next time, guys, take it easy and happy fishing.